gonna claim that this is a perfect tutorial because I am learning as I go. And in this stage of learning, I have learned that uh, my method was not what I thought it was going to be. Hello. <laughs> so for the past like four-ish years or so, I have been obsessed with ball joint dolls and like doll customization and that kind of whole process and the whole hobby around it. And around my most recent birthday, which was this past December, I fell in love with the sculpt of this one doll. And if you follow me on TikTok, I have already talked about him. I'm not showing anybody yet. I'm waiting for him to get here. I'm keeping that to myself, um, but I'm super excited. Um, and for this birthday, my amazing partner got him for me and I'm so excited. They take a while to get made, so he's not here yet. And to pass the time, I've been making stuff for him. Like I said, on my TikTok, I've recently made him a shirt. It's actually <laughs> right here. I made him a little poet shirt and this little coat hanger. Look at how cute that is. And I already have his wig and his pants. And I'm just really excited, but I need something to do to work this excitement out. And as I was thinking about what I could do to make for him, you know, most of it's clothes and stuff like that, but like, I don't want him to just sit around and stare into space and like have that dead eye look. So I want him to make something for him to like do while he sat on like my shelf or, you know, was in photos because I'm really excited to take pictures of him and use him as a model. So I was going through what I could make for this doll to like do, to start with. And I was like, okay, I can make him some books, but do I really want to get into binding tiny books or have just fake chunks of books? Not right now. No, that's a lot of work. <laughs> okay, I can make him a phone. Well, I don't really want to have him just stare at a home screen, a painted home screen forever. That's kind of boring. Can make him a laptop. Well, that has a hinge. That's a little complicated. And at the time, you know, when I was going through all of this process, I didn't think I could do any of these really well, you know, because there's a lot that goes into these things. Um, and I want to give myself time to practice scale model making before I get into some of these more complicated things. But then I thought about my personal favorite handheld console, the Switch. This thing goes with me everywhere because it's a handheld console that I can play a bunch of different games on. And I'm sure you're familiar with it. Fits nicely in your hand. You look at it instead of the wall ahead of you. Um, it's small and it seemed feasible. So I figured it was the perfect thing to be my first one third scale build. And if I screwed the whole thing up, it never had to see the light of day. This video never had to be made. And I could just scrap the whole thing and pretend it never happened and go back to making clothes. But obviously you're watching this video now and <laughs> it got made. <laughs> So I'm really, really excited to bring you along for the process and hopefully you'll be able to use my process to make your own and to use it to um, help you figure out what not to do maybe or what to do. I did learn a lot through this process. So um, I am really proud of how it turned out. So I'm gonna quit yapping and uh, get into the video. Okay, so to start this process, these are the materials we're going to need. I'm going to need to measure the switch and the Joy-Con holder with the Joy-Cons in it, but of course they'll have to also be in the switch first. Um, a flexible measuring tape. I've got my, there we go, sewing one here and something to take notes with that's also going to work to do my sketching on. So let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna start with all of my measurements. Um, that's the first place you gotta go with all this. So the first one that I'm gonna take is my height right here. I'm gonna take that from the top all the way down to the bottom across the front because it's a little bit easier to do that than on the back. Um, you know, it's a little wobbly there. And I'm gonna write that down and then I'm gonna get my depth and write that down as well.
I did screw up here and take a second depth instead of taking my um, length. So I, I do go back and fix that later. Um, and then I need to get the width with the Joy-Cons here of the whole thingamabob, you know. And I did mess up some of my measurements, so I had to go back later in the video and redo them. So I do fix that later on. Now I need to do math, which sucks, and divide all of these numbers by one third. I have cut out most of my math to spare you guys how long this took me, because it took me a painfully long time even with the calculator. And as you can see, I'm finally getting those measurements that I missed. <laughs> it, it took me a painfully long time. You'd think I'd be doing a little better. No, no, even with the calculator, it took me forever. But once I get all my math done, I can finally get moving on. So there, I finally have all of my measurements and these are all of them. So screenshot them if you wanna make your own. All right, so now that I have my measurements off to the side here, I can work on uh, actually making the switch. So the material I think I'm gonna use is, um, Popsicle sticks, yeah. Um, so I'm going to take my measurements and figure out how many of these I will need to line up with my one third scale measurements that I just got. So we need a height of 1.25 inches. So let's see, let's see, one of these, okay, let's put another one right up next to it. All right, so that's longer, so we'll need two of them. Ooh, let me take these compression gloves off since I'm working with wood and I'm about to work with glue, so that'll be real fun. Let's take those off and just toss them back there. We're gonna take some black foam here and grab my scissors, my little guys. And I am going to cut a piece that is my height and my width. I have sped up most of my clips of me actually making everything, so it looks like I'm moving a lot faster than I was. I promise you I was moving very, very slowly. Please take your time working with sharp objects. It is not worth losing a finger. I promise it's not worth the scarring that will come from that. So after I cut out my foam piece here, I took an old paintbrush and some craft glue and I just attached my popsicle sticks to the foam backing. I put some pressure on it and then I set it aside to dry with a coaster sitting on top of it so that way it would stay flat. Once it dried, I took my craft knife and got to work cutting the wood popsicle sticks down to size. This took so long because this is wood and I was going at it with a craft knife. Also, once again, these clips are sped up. Take your time, please. This is incredibly dangerous. gonna claim that this is a perfect tutorial because I am learning as I go and in this stage of learning I have learned that uh, my method was not what I thought it was going so since the popsicle sticks popped off I decided just to score the wood and go from there um, but next 
I got my other piece of foam cut down to size, which is the exact same way I did it with the first piece of foam. Um, and then I got to work rounding off all of my corners. So that's what I'm doing right here, as you can see. I used a chisel uh, tip craft knife um, blade. And once again, be very, very, very careful. I am going super slow as I did this. These clips are sped up by like at least three times the, the speed I was actually going. Please be super careful. I have had one of these blades break on me while I was doing this. It flew off and I almost got hurt. Be very, very careful with these blades, please. Be very aware of your surroundings and what you're doing. Make sure you don't get hurt. Don't lose a finger. Don't cut yourself. Be careful. Please take a lot of caution. These are knives. They are not a toy. They're not to be played around with. So please, please, please be careful. And there they are, looking so cute. I love them, just little popsicle sticks. So once all my corners were rounded, I was able to trim down the popsicle sticks to the size of the wood. Oh, there's my face, I'm crying. Gotta love that. Um, please excuse that, I had to get, I, I was getting pretty close to the camera. I did kick it at one point. <laughs> but yeah, after getting all of this trimmed down, I can then glue all of my pieces to my phone. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is take this piece of foam and measure up my screen height. Going to take some old used um, gift cards and paint them with my top four favorite games and make interchangeable game cards for this little switch. So let's cut out my screen size and then draw out that shape onto the screens and then I can get to painting them. And I'll show you the screenshots I've taken as references. So I made my border just a little larger than the measurements actually called for because if I followed what my math actually said to do, it would be so little and unmanageable and I was just not gonna do that to myself. I need this to be functional and stable. So I took some liberties there and I made it just a little bit bigger. Once I popped out the middle here, as you can see, I, oh, there I am doing more math. Oh my God, I forgot how much I had to go back and do math. I really did not set myself up for success with this. <laughs> do better than me, 
do better than me. I did bad. Do better than me. <laughs> but here I am marking out my seaming for the Joy-Cons where they connect to the screen and stuff. Um, and then I'm going to round off my corners and then move on to my next step. There it is. Nice and cute. So here I did pause for a moment on the body of the switch and work on getting my screen cards cut down to size. I was originally going to do four paintings, um, but by the time I got to actually painting things, this video had already, I'd already been recording for like, man, it was multiple days by the time I had gotten to that point. And the footage that I had racked up was so many hours that I decided to um, hold off on that. So I did cut out four here. You're not going to see all four in this video. They will be saved for later, but I am doing that now. I'm cutting out four um, screen sized cards to paint in um, game screenshots. So now that my cards are all cut out, I can go in and glue my screen border to the rest of the body. I was using um, card scraps here to keep my spacing for my screen, but I did go in later and replace that with another gift card entirely, just so that way I had a little bit more wiggle room with um, my glue and stuff and I wasn't gonna glue it down in the wrong spots. I also added binder clips when I switched out the cards um, to pinch everything in place and make sure that nothing slid around. You'll see that in just a moment. The other benefit of the binder clips is that it allows me to move the card around as the glue is drying to ensure that it doesn't glue down the card to the foam or the popsicle sticks because I need the card to be able to move.
So once the glue was dry, I was able to remove the clips and wiggle my card loose. Well, I wiggled the card loose while the clips were still kind of attached because I didn't want to break anything. Um, yep, but here we go. It did take me a little bit. I wanted to be very careful. Um, once again, these clips are sped up, so it's moving very slowly. Um, so I didn't tear any of the foam or anything like that. But yeah, there we go. The card served its purpose. And now I'm going to wrap my exposed edges in a strip of foam. I did take my little cut gift card pieces here uh, in a second to do a fit test just to make sure that things would slide in and out nicely without getting stuck and to make sure that when I attached my foam border everything would go on nicely. Um, I was doing a lot of fit testing here just to make sure everything would go and attach the way I wanted it to without any issues. I just really wanted to make sure that it was coming out correctly and that nothing would go wrong along the process and that that bottom seam there would stay open along the entire bottom interior. I was really worried about accidentally gluing it shut because that, that would have been horrible to get this far and glue the bottom shut. Here's my fit test, just to be sure that nothing is getting stuck and that my cards aren't gonna fall apart. I did switch to a faster setting glue here. Um, this is a kind of Gorilla Glue and later on I switched to Super Glue. I was getting tired of being stuck holding things forever. Um, it, it was miserable. I was stuck holding stuff for so long and it gave the foam time to retract before the glue set. So I did switch to a much faster setting glue.
So now that my glue had set enough, I was able to go in and trim off all of my excess foam here and, you know, clean up all the glue and fold down the edges and all that jazz. Here I took some scrap wire that I had lying about and dipped it into the glue so I could wedge it down into that little crease there that was open. Um, and here in a moment I'll take some of my scrap foam and wedge it down into that space as well just to fill it all in. I then took that same method and used it to add foam to the top edge of the switch body without gluing it shut. I left the card there for a good little bit of that um, just so I wouldn't get any of the super glue in the crease. I also used this method to add some more bulk to the top of the screen border just to give it some more substance to it so it didn't look so flimsy. Here I got started on painting. Um, I did get the interior screen painted black and then that larger section painted black as well. Um, I was gonna paint the whole thing, but I had forgotten something very, very important. I had forgotten to add the Joy-Con triggers. 
So here in a moment, I'll stop what I'm doing and get the Joy-Con triggers put in place so that way it's all done. And then I'll get into the final step of painting this thing. The coat of black that I was adding was just to cover up any of the glue staining and to sort of blend all of the different foam pieces together a little more clearly. So the way I created the Joy-Con triggers was by taking some thin strips of foam and curving them um, to the shape that I needed and then rounding off the bottoms and then just sort of jamming it them into the correct shape while gluing them down. I know that's not a very scientific way of, or even helpful way of describing that, but that's really what I did. Um, I'm sorry, I can't be more descriptive, but that was the best way I could think to do it with foam. Um, so if you choose to replicate this, you just gotta make little curvy bits um, and then put glue along the bottom edges and hold them in place while they dry and then you'll have joy cons and since it's foam it actually moves like a joy con and see look at that look how cute that is i think they turned out pretty good and I, I did the exact same thing for the other side they're a little janky but that's how it goes when it's handmade i think they're really cute like look at that it moves <laughs> I did use a little bit of extra scrap there just to bulk up the backs. Um, I used the wire method as well because I'm working on such a small scale here. I didn't want to make a mess of anything. Um, so I used some extra scrap to create the sort of like bumps that are underneath the uh, triggers. So that way it's not just a little shelf hanging out there. And now that that's done, I can get back to cleaning up all my paints. So I do the same thing that I did on the front to the back, give everything a nice thin coating of black paint, and then I'll move in to painting in my Joy-Con colors. I am just using the cheap, uh, I think I'm using like, not even all crate and barrel paints here. It's just whatever cheap paint I had sitting in a box. I'm pretty sure some of them are so old they're clumping together. But it is cheap paint, so I'm expecting this to take quite a few coats. And it did. It took a while. Uh, these clips are sped up by four to five times speed. Um, it took a very long time. And that's including dry in times where I just left it alone and walked away. Um, which those are mercifully cut out. <laughs> even I didn't want to deal with those but um, I just turned the camera off while everything was dry and, and then I walked away my black didn't give me too many issues I did end up fanning it like this a lot and it looks so silly that I just couldn't cut it so here's my blue and my red my blue didn't give me a lot of trouble it went on really nice really opaque I was able to knock that out in a couple of coats, no problem. And as you can see how slow I'm moving there, yeah, slow that down by like four. And that's how slow I was actually moving. This took me so long, but I wanted to make sure that my lines stayed neat. So there's a reason everything sped up in this video. <laughs> I think the unedited footage is like at least 24 hours worth of footage. It's gotta be, there's so much footage. 
It took so long. <laughs> And there's a lot that I cut out that you guys just won't see. But look at how nice that blue's going on. The blue's going on wonderfully. But when you see how this red goes on, this red, this red came from... I would not wish this red against my worst enemy. It was the most sheer red paint I've ever used in my life. I wasn't expecting it. I don't know why. It was so thin and why it was so just watery and wouldn't go down thick and nice and opaque, but it, you could just see straight through it. I put layer after layer after layer of this red down and you haven't seen it yet. You don't know what I'm talking about yet, but you're about to see it. You're about to see it and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about once you see it. See, initially, it's, it's it's not so bad, but do you see that? Do you see that? How you can see the, the color behind it, straight through it? I thought, oh, it's, be it's because I put black paint down, right? That's why it's doing that, right? No. No, later on, I put a coat of white down over top of the reds. Because I'm like, oh, well, I, sh I should just put a layer of white down. That'll make everything easier. And then I put the red over it again. And you can see the white through the red. I don't know what's wrong with this paint. There it is. There's my white. And this is like three or four coats of red by this point too. There are so many coats of red on this thing, it's ridiculous. By the end, there's probably a thick enough coat that I could peel it off. I'm not kidding. There's such a thick coat of red paint on this. And then you add in this one thin coat of white. Look at how quickly that white covers. When a white paint is more opaque than a red, you got a problem. What is wrong with that red paint? I, I don't know. I don't know. That red paint gave me uh, so much trouble. It gave me even more trouble when we got into doing the Joy-Con grip. It was a nightmare to work with. But it was the only color I had that was right. I'm so... <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is what I get for using cheap craft paints. But yeah. Oh, at least this is funny. This is sped up so much, but it's just so funny I couldn't cut it out. Just looking at me fanning it is so funny. <laughs> but look at that. Look at that paint. It's still, you can still see the white through it. It's better. But it's such a thin paint and I don't understand. I was just so tired of painting this thing red. I was so done with looking at it. And in between all of the coats of red and white, I did add a couple more coats to the blue. So... By the time that my red was done, my blue was also done. There was like two or three coats of blue on there. Just to solidify everything and make it look nice. I mean, it turned out pretty nice. So next I'm going to go in with all of my little details here. And I'm doing that with a super fine point pen. Um, and the pupil from a googly eye and some scraps of foam. So the pupil from a googly eye here is how I'm going to create my joysticks. And I think I'm going to zoom in here in a second. I hope I zoom in. I can't remember. I know I'm editing this video. I could just go check, but I don't remember. It's, it's been a little bit. I'm doing the voiceover now. It's no longer video editing time. It's voiceover time. <laughs> but um, I just cut the pupil out of its plastic casing 
and glued it onto a little scrap of foam, just a teeny tiny piece that was smaller than the pupil size, so that way it had the same uh, shadow that the Joy-Cons do. Not Joy-Cons, Joy-Sticks. Duh. Do. Well, here we go. Here's the man that the Joy-Sticks do. Um, and then I glued those in place on the Joy-Con shape. And then here I am again with my super fine tipped pen to add some details in. Um, this thing, I was so scared of tearing my foam that for some of my details, I went in with a, uh, my smallest brush for the circles because I didn't want my circles to tear my foam. But for like my little plus and minus sign at the top, that was done with the pen. I mean, this is, this is tiny. This is, that's a single dot of paint. And keep in mind again, these clips are super sped up. I was going so, so slow. This took me, this took me at least an hour. I'm serious. In total, this process right here took me at least an hour to like get all of these details done. This clip is only like 20 minutes long, but trying to figure out how to do my details took me at least an hour. I'm not kidding. It took me so long to figure out how to do the Joy-Cons alone and finding those googly eyes. It wasn't even my idea to use them as the Joy-Con uh, controllers. It was my partner's idea, and I am so thankful for that person, because if not, <laughs> I would have been so lost. And it turned out so nice in the end, and I'm so happy, and I'm so thankful that they were there to help me. Before I added the joysticks, I did go in with a uh, UV coating to spray it all down, um, so that's what I'm going to go do now. So after I had let it sit per the instructions on my can, I went in and added my joysticks. I then went in and added my final details, which was coloring in the back Joy-Con triggers. And then I'm gonna give it one final coating of my UV protectant and it's done. And then we can jump in to the game screens. Very exciting.
So I started by scoring all of the cards with my craft knife just to disrupt that glossy coating on all of them because I was really worried that my paint wouldn't stick if I didn't. Um, I didn't want to get through the entire painting only for it to peel up and just have the little paint chip basically <laughs> of, a, of a painting and have that all be for nothing. I then went in and added a base coat of white to all of my cards. Even though I only do one of them in this video, I did want to have all of them prepped, just so that way I didn't have to do it later. I will be posting the other three as short form content later in the year, so if that's something you're interested in, go check me out on some other platforms. So once my background color, my backdrop color was dry, I went in with a pencil and sketched in my border, just so I know where I'm working. And now I can get into painting. The first screenshot I'm doing is from Animal Crossing. And this is the smallest thing I've ever painted. It was super daunting to get started, but I'm really proud with how it turned out. So I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with it. <laughs> but um, it was quite scary to get into. So I made sure my pencil was quite sharp when I got started because I was working so small. Um, I will zoom in properly with the camera here in a moment and not just a camera effect. So um, you'll be able to see it a little better. But I was really nervous. Um, I'm using the same cheap craft paints that I was before, and there's my little background sketch. I'm very happy with it. These are the colors I'm starting with, a blue, a white, and a black, um, because it was nighttime and stormy when I took this screenshot. So I started with the color of the sky, and I had already mixed that up, and I went in with that, and that's my base color. And then I used this sky tone for pretty much everything. I added it to the sand color that you'll see later on, the rock, all of it, the ocean. This was my tying color, basically. It kept everything nice and tied together and kept my palette consistent with one another.
And all of these painting clips are sped up by like four, five. No, I think these here are sped up by five um, because of how slow it I was going, especially with like the rocks here. Um, I was really taking my time with these. I wanted to make sure that all of my details were exact. I don't really paint on this small of a scale. This is the first time I've ever done this. And I really wanted to make sure it was right. So I took my time and I made sure all of my little itty bitty details were correct. Um, and all my colors were correct. Please excuse my head in the frame here as I do the shadows. I wanted to make sure that my paint was going where I wanted it. Because I didn't have teeny itty bitty tiny brushes. So I was working with the point of a chisel tip brush. Which wasn't perfect but it came out okay. Because look at that. That, that's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. I'm still proud of that. So once my background was all done and dry, I was able to get to work on my little character. I took the smallest brush I had once all my colors were mixed up, um, which is that chisel tip that I was showing you earlier. That's the smallest brush that I own. Um, and set that aside and got to work on my little sketch. And went in and painted all of my little details in. This was so little. It was so little.
once my paint was dry I went in with this fine tipped brush here drew in the fishing rod and then made some of my little details just a little bit more clear and you know cleaned up my lines a little bit and that's it that's my little painting um, and that's the switch too so that's a big chunk of this video <laughs> done <laughs> um, all that's left is to do the joy con grip and that's very very exciting there it is I'm so happy with it and there it is in the switch it turned out so cute look at that I did give it a spray of the coating as well just to protect it um, but it's so cute all right the process for the joy-con grip was pretty much exactly the same as the uh, switch so I have sped up all of this footage it's it's exactly the same I did learn a lot in the beginning of this video so I approached it just a little bit differently <laughs> um, but the process is the same and all of that so there's not a whole lot to say at this point um, just yeah do the same thing again but on a smaller scale if that's possible to make a smaller thing of a bob I do want to say that I keep all of my scraps, all of these big chunks of popsicle stick and foam that you see me cutting off, they do go in a bag. I do keep them all. I I, I don't throw things away like that. Um, I, I like to keep all of the pieces so that way I don't... Uh, yeah, there's my bag. I don't like throwing things away if they can still have a use. Um, I just think it's wasteful. I like to get the most out of my materials. So before I can add the actual grip handhold pieces, I need to pretty much finish the entire middle section um, with like the red and the blue and all the paints. So that way it doesn't get on the handholds. So that's what I'm doing here um, is just making sure I'm finishing off all of my edges and that's what I was showing you as well. Um, and then I'll paint it and all of that. Pretty much finish up everything but the handholds. After making the switch body like in this scale, I will say the Joy-Cons were like 10 times easier. <laughs> Having had the knowledge already of how to do it, it was so much faster, so much easier. I wasn't guessing, so I really hope that if you have been wanting to make one of these, use this video, use my knowledge, let it give you a springboard. 
don't go in from scratch. Let this give you help and ideas, because, you know, build off of what I've already done. Even if you don't do it exactly, build off of it, you know. So now I can get to painting it again. Um, and if you're wondering, no, the red was no easier to work with this time than it was last time. It was just as much as a pain in the ass. But it's fine. It actually was worse this time. It chipped. I don't know if it was because of the white base coat that I added. I don't know if I didn't let it dry enough or what. But it chipped. But for the sections that chipped, I went in with a red paint pen and filled those out so when you see those don't worry they do get fixed it's not the end of the world So for the handholds, I took two little tubes of foam, I guess you could say, and attached them together with like a bar in the middle. And then just like rounded off the edges. And that was pretty much it. It was really simple, really quick, really easy. It took like no time at all. And then once the edges were rounded, I gave it like a thin coat of black paint and tried really hard not to mess up or paint over the um, middle part. But yeah, that's, that's basically it for the Joy-Con grips. It was really, really quick, really easy, really simple.
Finally, I was able to glue it into place, which was just a little bit of tacking glue on the edges. No real problem at all. You know, just pop it right on in there. And then after this, I could add in all of my little details and my joysticks, which I did the exact same way as I did last time. And, and that was it. Coat of sealant topped on top of that, and, and it was done. So I'm gonna let you finish watching up this process, and then we'll get into the reveal. I am, I am so happy with how they turned out and, and I really can't wait for my doll to get here so I can see them with him and the scale in person and him holding them also like, look at this, <laughs> look at that, that is, oh my god, it's so cool, I'm so happy, um, I was really nervous going into this. But with how it turned out, and I've learned so much, I'm, I'm very proud of myself, and I'm really looking forward to my next project. Um, this is the most complex thing that I have ever done. Well, not ever done, but done on a very long time. Um, working with the material limitations was intense, because I didn't want to have to go out and buy stuff. I am a bit of a junk collector. Um, I like to think that things that would be destined for a landfill could have another use, so I hold on to everything much to my family's uh, displeasure, you could say. They're not too happy about that, but I have drawers full of just bits and bobs that could be used for things like this. And I'm very excited to get into more stuff. Um, I, I am genuinely so happy with it. And I don't know if I showed you how it can, uh, can work, but look at that, it comes all the way out and I'm gonna make more games for it. Um, but this video is already so long that I decided that I'll just do them as short form content on uh, my TikTok and my Instagram. So if you want to see those, pop over there. Um, links will be in the description and stuff. But I'm, I'm so happy and I'm really excited to get into more projects and to do more scale builds. Um, honestly. If you have a thing that you're thinking about doing that you're really anxious about and think you don't have the skill for, go for it. You may surprise yourself because I certainly did. I did not think I could do this. And look, here they are. They're made, they're in my hands and they look actually pretty good for being made of foam and popsicle sticks. So yeah, go for it. Take the jump, do it, trust that even if it doesn't turn out the way you wanted, you'll learn something through the process. So much of creating is screwing up <laughs> and learning from your screw ups. So I hope my screw ups in this video have taught you something. 
Um, and even if not, I hope they were entertaining. So <laughs> I'm just really happy with how this turned out. And as soon as the doll gets here um, and I've got him dressed and stuff, I'll take pictures and post them on my Instagram and stuff like that. Um, you know, Instagram, TikTok, Tumblr, Patreon, all of that. Um, we'll have photos of the doll it, with the props that I've made. So you'll be able to see that. Um, speaking of those things, if you'd like to follow me on any of those, you can find me at Shipwrecked Pirate. Same name here. I got lucky and was able to snag it. Um, and that I'm at Shipwrecked Pirate on Instagram, TikTok, Tumblr, and Patreon. Um, and if you don't want to have to go and search that up, I do have links in the description down below to all of those that'll take you there real quick. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. I am really, really happy with how it turned out and um, I'm really excited to get into my next projects, which I have already gotten started on. And if you'd like to see um, some behind the scenes content and the stuff I'm working on, head over to my Patreon. Any uh, paid members have access to real time behind the scenes content and um, real time updates. Stuff will roll out on my other socials closer to when the videos go up, but if you'd like real time behind the scenes stuff, check there. Um, thank you so, so much for watching this video and I hope I'll see you next time.